What's up, y'all, and welcome back to From the Dark. My name is Marcus, also known as EMB. Uh, today we're gonna be rocking our Furious Spider build. Uh, but before I get into that, I do want to say that, uh, yes, the Bloodborne DLC release date has been announced. There's a trailer out for it. Uh, the Dark Souls 3 release date is out there. Um, I'm, I'm planning to have my podcast, Poison Arrow, there will be one going up either late today or early tomorrow morning that's going to discuss all of that, a bunch of Tokyo Game Show stuff, and also kind of some general gaming news. So there is a, a podcast on the way. Uh, just stay tuned. But let's get back to From the Dark. <laughs> just want to get that announcement out of the way before we get started here today. But today, From the Dark, we've got an awesome new weapon. You guys who haven't seen this before are probably freaking out right now, especially now that I did that. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Quelag's Fury Sword. It was I you you get a plus ten curved sword, and then take it to the giant blacksmith like I did last time, making Knight Artorius's sword. I took him a plus ten painting guardian sword off camera, and got this. I got him to upgrade to this using the soul of Quaylog. Now, that means we can't get the Chaos Blade this playthrough, but we will get it next next time around. A curved sword born from the soul of Quaylog, daughter of the Witch of Isleth, who was transformed into a Chaos Demon. Like Quaylog's body, the sword features shells, spikes, and a coating of Chaos Fire, power affected by Wilder's humanity. So it actually does have increased attack power uh, based off of our humanity, I guess, like a Chaos Weapon. Um, <clears throat> Another thing I want to note about today's build Using this why am I got up? I have a plus six spider shield. What the hell am I doing? Uh, we're gonna be rocking our pyromancy flame We're gonna be using some pyros today. You'll notice that I've got the crown of dusk on Remember that the crown of dusk uh, Increases the power of magic, but also the damage that you take from magic attacks But you'll notice that it doesn't look like I'm wearing anything uh, This is because I am using a texture mod. It was made by I'm shiny it's on Dark Souls Nexus, and I'll put a link in the description for you PC guys. Um, all it does is make the thing invisible, and it only does it locally. So if I'm playing against somebody else in PvP, there's no unfair advantage or anything. They still see the crown normally, but uh, the crown looks stupid as hell on, like, a cracked out hollow like my guy. Now, if it's if it's if it's Dusk Chun, you know it's really cute and everything, but yeah. So I'm just using a mod that makes it invisible. But we get the uh, we get the the damage boost there on our pyros. We also are using the Bellowing Dragon Crest ring bought from Griggs to also increase. It says sorceries, but uh, yeah, <laughs> you'll see here. Actually, first let's uh, let's let's use a fire orb here and let's just demonstrate the differences in damage because if I drop off that and drop off this and then I lob a little fire orb in this guy's general direction 322 he don't like that too much but it ain't too big of an issue for him <laughs> having the fury sword shoved through his ass is kind of an issue but uh, yeah all right now let me go back here we gonna rest at the bonfire what, what, what was that? Like 360, something like that? 360. Xbox 360, 411, DLL, something, something. I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> Bellowing Dragon Crest. Sorry, I'm just... <laughs> one of the moods, guys. I apologize. It, if, if you've been with me for a while, you know what happens sometimes. I get, I get in one of them moods. So now we're talking about 412 once we equip Bellowing. <laughs> we still got the parries. It parries. I don't give a shit what you're gonna drop. <laughs> I've got so many silver knight spears and even a sword at this point. It don't matter anymore. So that was four something something. Where's my dusk? Dusk chan, where's your there you go. There you go. Miyazaki-san's a huge fan of Dusk too. He said in the the radio interview, he said, Don't you talk bad about her. <laughs> Alright, and now we're talking 412. Still got them parries. <laughs> Remember, I told you these guys are the, the trickiest ones for me to parry, but um, I farmed a little bit to get souls. Actually, let me show my stats. I don't remember if I leveled up at all. I don't think I did. Maybe my endurance, but I just want to show the stats so you guys can keep up. All right, and now let's just check to make sure that they stack, which I am positive that they do, but I do want to demonstrate it. It's one thing to tell people something, it's another thing to show it. 
That's 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 always like that, that's always been a big thing with me. Like, and see, there we go. Now we're one shotting them. So we got that going for us, guys. <laughs> we got that going for us. All right. So this is a, a pretty cool little setup that we got rocking. It it really really is the furious spider. Uh, I probably should just use the pyro on him. <laughs> Think about it. Oh well. Get wrecked. Now we got uh, we got a couple of events that we need to to handle here in, in Orlando, right? Like we haven't done Ziegmeier stuff yet, and we haven't taken care of that Titanite Demon. We got some we got some gates we need to unlock, a couple of items we need to pick up, another Silver Knight Spear. <sighs> I got so many of these damn things. Oops, I was too far away. Actually, I mean you can still parry it from that distance, but the timing is a little bit different. Uh, that was a setup parry right there, by the way. Uh, for you guys who maybe haven't seen that before, to block the first hit and then parry the second one, and it's a safer way to parry. And it's not just for these guys. A lot of people in PvP were doing that back in the day. I don't know how many people still actually use shields. Like they they fell out of favor pretty pretty hardcore <laughs> uh, early on in the game's life cycle, and I don't know if they ever like made a recovery to where people are using them again. All right, uh, this Titanite Demon is in a very small, enclosed little area in here, and I actually don't think our shield stability is that great for dealing with this particular dude. Yeah. Yeah, that's nasty. That's nasty, bro. But we do a lot of damage with this great combustion, so it's all to the good. All right, we can, we can make it. We can make it. One, two, three, three. Ooh, you burn. Burn in righteous fire. Uh, that 658 there, probably a uh, attack of opportunity. Or off balance hit, or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Two more demon titanites. Yes, yes, yes. We actually should almost have enough. I think we maybe need two more. One more. I think we need one more to be able to max out the uh, true great sword of Artorius. Artorius. Every time I every time I hear the name Artorius, I cannot help it. It's not appropriate at all, but I immediately think of Notorious B.I.G. Artorius B.I.G. This is an interesting. This is really kind of a fascinating room here. Some sort of little chapel. You've got your pews. You got your pulpit. I guess you would call this a pulpit. I ain't been to church in a while. <laughs> I ain't been to church in a minute. And you have these little things on the side too. I wonder if it was to the blacksmith deity. I really don't know. An, a red banner and a green banner. Hmm. I don't know. I, I really don't know what this what this particular room is all about. <clears throat> I know you guys hate it when I say something like that. I don't know. But I would I would prefer to just say I don't know when I don't know. Rather than just making some shit up. Of course I do speculate from time to time, but I try to tell you guys when I speculate. Ooh, I messed my fucking parry. Didn't miss that one. <laughs> shudder, shudder, shudder. The Dragon Slayer arrow. Alright, now. Ziegmeier right over there, but first, I just want to point out that from here we can actually see that's uh that's the Ornstein room there. And Well, we can almost see it. Oh, we can probably maybe, maybe. Yeah. There's the entrance <laughs> where we actually came into An Orlando. I just want to point it out because it's just once again, that, that that feeling of how far we've actually come in this place is pretty damn, pretty damn righteous, if you ask me. Nobody did, but I told you anyway. And the glorious sunlight of Anne Orlando. <laughs> Don't fly so close to the sun, young Icarus. Have not been over here yet. Oh, hate it when I miss parries, <laughs> which means I hate a lot of the time. <laughs> I'm just showing off at that point. Uh, the forward R1 of Curved Swords, once again, I think I showed it early in the playthrough, but it does this backflip. And if you saw me at the end of the video where I had Iron Flesh on, uh, I was actually using this move 
you can still flip when you when you have iron flesh on. Uh, another little trick to <clears throat> I'm getting a little bit off topic, but told you it's just one of those days. Uh, another trick with iron skin is when you've got it active, you can actually use the R2 of this butcher's knife for a little <laughs> a little sprint, a mini sprint, and that actually can be faster at getting you around, getting you to your your opponent than uh, walking at that rate. So it's just worth worth knowing, worth considering. Zigmire, I'm about to cough, so. Let's talk to you, and I can just mute that part. <laughs> Whatever can be done. Whatever can be done. Ah, you again. Let me guess. Were you repelled by the Silver Knights? Ah, oh, don't be ashamed. Tis the fate of vanguard like you and I. I'll think of something. We can overcome this together. The fate of Vanguard, such as you and I. This is quite a fix. We'll need another three, no, maybe five bodies. Hmm, quite a fix indeed. We'll need another three, maybe five bodies. So if we had three more bodies, it would be him and me and three others. There would be five of us. If we had five, we're talking about seven at that point. What do you need seven bodies to deal with, Zeekmeyer? What's your, what's your problem? Hmm, everything seems- oh, there's a couple of knights in here, and- OH MY GOD! Did he not see me? Hey, dude, you're- Ah! Totally supposed to react. And then get parried. Zygma, are you seeing this, bro? You seeing this, bro? Bro! Notice me, Simpa! <laughs> you see what I did there, man? This is quite a fix. We'll need another three, no, maybe five bodies. Hmm, quite a fix indeed. Is this still a fix, Sigmire? Is this really still a fix? I mean, you just saw me waste that guy, right? Let's see, what do we got here? We got two more! For Christmas sake, Sigmire, there's only two- Oh, uh, whatever. You know what? You do you, man. You do you. And I'm just gonna do me. And gonna do them as well. <laughs> Boom. Are we not doing phrasing anymore? Are we not doing phrasing anymore? Hey. Fix the problem. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Oh ho! What's on your mind, friend? Wait. You defeated those monsters? Fantastic! I'm saved! This knight of Catalina hereby commends you. Take this as a token of my gratitude. Aw, that's sweet. But be warned. Gallantry entails great risk. Next time, give me a chance to come up with a plan. Gallantry does entail great risks. That's true. Tiny beings ring. Ring made of an ancient tiny red jewel. Small grants small increase to HP. Ring grants power rings grant powers large and small. Their discovery and effective use can make one's journey easier. Uh, this is actually one of the starting gifts that you can have. You can see it's gonna raise our HP up a little bit there. Um if I recall correctly, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is one of the starting gifts you can get. And so that description is kind of to give you an introduction to what rings are all about. Um, but it's not very good. <laughs> it's 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 not a huge amount of HP. There's normally better rings to choose. But be warned. Gallantry entails great risks. Next time, give me a chance to come up with a plan. All right, Zeke, bro. Uh, this room is awesome uh, because this is this is concept artwork for Anna Orlando. This is actually kind of a low resolution version of the concept artwork. It's you can actually see it in the design art art book. Um, but I really really love the way that they actually use the concept art in the game, like as paintings. It's fucking cool. <laughs> Banana for scale, right? There's <laughs> your lost. There's your giant sentinels. I'm not sure about that. It looks like it looks like an aqueduct in the background that almost looks like the um, 
<clears throat> the the hidden bonfire in the forest and whatnot, but it's not. I, I don't know that that painting always fucks with me, man. Sin's fortress, <laughs> and you know it's fascinating to me too. This you can actually tease out a little bit of timeline information from this kind of uh, do the fact there's a painting of Sin's fortress and it's here and it's kind of lopsided like this. It makes you feel like. Uh, this 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 painting of Sin's Fortress has been there since before the city was abandoned. Now you might say, well, so I mean, but the point is, like, it wasn't built after the gods left. Like, this isn't something that only Gwendolyn did after the gods abandoned Anne Orlando. So Sin's Fortress probably existed before the place was abandoned, and now it's in disarray and the painting's all crooked like that. But I know that's that's kind of a like. Well, let's just kill him. <laughs> Unless he, he might have something to say about that, but... Or maybe not. <clears throat> maybe not. Maybe he won't. Maybe he won't have anything to say about that. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Get wrecked! <laughs> Sorry, I'm just having fun. <laughs> Don't mind me, just having fun over here. I should, actually, I can talk about their equipment now that I think about it. Because, like I said, I picked up a bunch of it. I just quit picking it up eventually. <clears throat> the Silver Knights of Anne Orlando guard the city using this beautifully slender weapon. The spear can be wielded by both hands in a focus thrust that uses one's body weight or swung in a large sweeping motion. Actually, a pretty cool spear. Um, yeah, and it's a divine weapon. I guess that it, it does have that attribute. I actually did know about that. <laughs> I was about to say, I didn't know that. I actually did know that. Got a bunch of those, but I've only got one of this. Silver Knight Straight Sword. Yeah, I had to check to make sure I wasn't lying there. <laughs> I only got one of these. The Silver Knights of Anne Orlando guard the city using this beautifully slender weapon. Its chain attacks, in which the wielder takes great advancing steps and makes use of his body weight, are deadly even in single hits. This is an another weapon that a lot of people like for dex builds. <clears throat> um, I'm not a huge fan of it. It's it's one of these weapons that you get it, it has very high base damage, that 175 is very high base damage, and it does eventually get fairly good dex scaling as you upgrade it. Um, the issue is it's it doesn't end up scaling really significantly better than it doesn't end up significantly more powerful than Balder's side sword. Actually, I think it ends up weaker. Um, I don't like the move set as much, and it also weighs six units. Note that, that this not six pounds or six kilograms or anything like it's this is six units, whatever unit they actually use in the world there. But um, whereas like the Balder's side sword is three, so. I never personally can justify using the Silver Knight Sword, but a lot of people really do like this as a dex weapon, so uh, it's one to consider. Whee! <laughs> but yeah, you just gotta kill them a bit to get that. Hope you're not a mimic. You're not a mimic. I was trying to kick you, actually, and then I remembered I can't kick. Two more Demon Titan. I, oh man, that's a maxed out great sword of Artorius. Artorius! Um, that we might use soon. We might hold off. I'm not sure. We might actually hold off on it. I, I haven't decided yet. But I'll decide soon. I'm enjoying playing around with Quaylogs right now. Although I should point out that since I spent so much Demon Titanite on the great sword of Artorius, wherever the hell it is. To get it to plus four, we don't really have too much to spare for the Fury Sword. <coughs> Demon Tight Knight uh, is is the one that you're gonna eventually end up having to farm for if you want to max everything out, or keep playing through the game. Of course, like there there is always that aspect of it. Let's unlock some gates. I actually uh, accidentally unlocked one of these gates already, but it's not a big deal, and I will show it to you now. But there's some stuff we can do up here. Well, there's lots of stuff to do in Anne Orlando. We'll jump out that... We'll jump out the window in a minute. <laughs> we gotta take care of some stuff first. Who are you? 
forge your weapons. Strong I am, forge I can. Notice a very cleverly hidden little treasure chest over here. And probably annoys a lot of people that, I can't get to the treasure chest, what do I do? Do I need to kill this guy to get to it? Like, I'm, I wonder how many people have killed this, this giant just trying to get to that treasure chest. Before I roll through here, let's take a look at these weapons. Battle axe, a smaller version of... Which axe is that? I don't know. That looks like a balder sword right there. And that's a balder shield for sure. Anyway, <laughs> you can just walk over here. And he does occasionally push you out of the way, but there we go. <coughs> we can <laughs> take his prized possession, the hawk wearing. He ain't gonna do nothing about it. That's okay. The hawk ring. Notice it's one of these. <clears throat> we already got the wolf ring of Artorius. We got the hornet ring of Kieran, Lord's Blade Kieran. Now we have one of the special rings granted to the four knights of Gwyn. The hawk ring belonged to Hawkeye Goth. I almost said go because that was what originally what it was. <laughs> belonged to Hawkeye Goth, who led the great archers. Boosts bow range so that arrows fly like they were shot by Goth's great bow, which took down high flying dragons. Uh, so, he was the leader of the, the Great Archers, and we'll, we'll play around with this ring a little bit later in the playthrough. <clears throat> it's no coincidence that it's found here next to this giant. Mm. Hello, Forge I can. Strong I am. <laughs> uh, we might actually just go ahead and get our... Yeah, let's go ahead and max this out. And while we're at it, I think, maybe, go ahead and work on the Fury Sword a bit. Shit. We only got one, but it's a nice little boost. Fury Swords, uh, it's another fascinating one in the fact that it does have split uh, physical and fire damage. And it does scale quite, quite, quite a bit with um, dexterity but also power affected by humanity saying so, don't worry I'll I'll die and we'll we'll check the damage numbers on that in a bit oh no you bounced off my shield and then you got wrecked enemies that have low defenses uh split damage weapon types really 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 destroy them so elemental weapons ooh hurts so good right oh you yeah, I missed Hey, you die. Thank you, sir. <coughs> this is the gate that I already accidentally opened. I apologize, um, but <laughs> I was in a hurry. <laughs> I was in a hurry to get back down to Andrea Vastora to ascend our painting guardian sword from being a plus five weapon to a plus ten weapon, or rather to a plus six so that I could upgrade it to plus ten. And then after that, um, I turned it into the fury sword that we have here oh will you die thank you I could bully this guy off again but or I don't think I did this one I could bully this guy off the edge like I did his brethren earlier but instead let's try to keep him up here Oh, I forgot that was a three-hitter. <laughs> Let's try to not knock him off. Oh, shit. I'm in... I was trying so hard not to do that. Because I haven't got the drop from them yet. I haven't got the demon spear from them yet. Oh, well. This Titanite chunk here, uh, very much a gameplay consideration because the Titanite chunk is actually... This will allow you to ascend your weapon with this giant blacksmith that will let you ascend your weapon to lightning weapon now we could take it back we, we don't have the ember yet to modify it these to plus 11 weapons but with the chunk this this giant doesn't need any special ember he's he's just that fucking good man uh so any plus 10 weapons that we bring him we can turn them into lightning weapons like you'll see this broadsword going from 164 
Instead, it'll be 147 physical and 147 lightning. And instead of 98 bonus physical damage, it will get zero bonus physical damage. Completely removes the scaling. So that, this param bonus where it goes from C to nothing over there, uh, that's actually why it's going from 98 to zero. Um, yeah. And we will... I'll, I'll demonstrate how split damage weapons, uh, how defense affects that, and why they're not really so super great. Uh, we'll do that later. If only we had the soul of Gwyn, Lord of Cinder, we could make the Great Lord Sword, but we can't. Can't do it yet. We're not going to make another lightning weapon. We have the lightning spear already, but what we are going to do, we are going to talk to this cool giant. Tis no good, but forge. I am anytime. Oh, well, I said we were going to talk to you. You're, you're, you're making me look bad, giant friend. You're making me look bad in front of the people. Talk tis no good. Are you sure you don't want to talk a little bit? Talk tis no good. No one home, everyone gone. Everyone gone. But you, friend, you talk. I but happy. Doesn't that just make you feel good inside? But you, friend, you talk. I no talk. But happy. He's just happy to listen to the conversations of warriors as he repairs or upgrades their their weapons. Such a cool, such a cool dude, man. We will. We will be back. We will be back. We'll visit you, man. He's so cool. <laughs> I love that character. <clears throat> hmm, there's treasure. There be treasure. You gotta get to the treasure. Hmm. Intriguing. These guys have very high defense. And... I wonder if I can get him from here. I knew I was gonna hit the gate. So why did you do it then? I'm stupid. That's why. Ooh, that almost one-shot him. If we had a little bit more upgraded pyromancy glove, that would tear him up. But you see how that attack is only doing 91 fucking damage from this. This this sword's got a pretty decent attack rating. It's uh, 343 is the attack rating. But that's combined physical and fire. And since... Enemy defense has a much higher impact on low damage numbers as opposed to high ones. <clears throat> it just ain't no good, man. However, if we two-hand our weapon, it's considerably better. More than the, uh... It's more than a 50% increase in our damage there. Eh. Oh, are you serious? Here, look. Thank you. And then two-handed art. Ah, I want to show them a two-handed art. Who will you please cooperate? We ain't got time. Ain't nobody got time for this. Yeah, 219. So uh, a higher power attack penetrates their defenses a lot better. And ugh, why did I pick that up? Why did I pick that? Up? I don't know why I have those goggles. I didn't need that. I was thinking it was going to be a chunk for a second, but those guys don't actually drop chunks, I don't guess, because, God almighty, I've killed enough of them. <laughs> they should have dropped a chunk for me by now, man. I think it's just the two in the main hall that can drop chunks, which, theoretically, I mean, not theoretically, but practically, you could get a, uh, a maxed out lightning weapon right here in this very room by the time you got here. Now... A maxed out normal weapon you still have to kind of take care of collecting an additional ember for Andre of Astora but I want to know who the fuck broke this because I can't break these <laughs> what the fuck man what kind of giant stupidly strong motherfucker broke this and he's paying for it Probably baseball is probably as you know what I can just see I can just see Gwendolyn and Gwen and the Silver Knights all chilling out with the four knights out here playing baseball out there. Except Gwendolyn doesn't really have any aptitude for it. He kind of more the stay inside, quiet and study type. 
So he w- he just wouldn't really have too much fun. And then he's all like, I'm going to stay in my room and, you know, let's let's have black <sighs> curtains and shit because I don't like all the light. And he's shopping at Hot Topic. I told you guys I was in one of them moods. And I'm sorry I failed to jump, too, because shit. <laughs> shit. There we go. <gasps> no, I fucking didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was thinking for myself. I was thinking for a second. I was like, wait a minute. Is this one of those areas where you can't get out unless you have a homeward bone or escape mirror? No, you can just walk out right here. Because if it was that case, I've been using the homeward miracle and I don't have any homeward bone. Oh, I do. I had one. Never mind. Fuck me. I was fine. I was fine. It was fine. It was fine, guys. We were good. We were fine. And we never did read these, did we? Uh, the copper coin, I believe we picked this up from Petrus. And even coins of great value in the world of men have little value in Lordron, where the accepted currency is souls. Those who dream of returning to the outside world are fond of carrying these around. That's Old Man McLoif, God of Medicine and Drink. And then we picked up these silver coins here in, in Orlando coin made of silver with a portrait of the legendary Night King Rendell on its face. Even coins of great value, blah, 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 blah. Um, so this is a silver coin with the legendary Night King Rendell on its face, possibly from Baldur, um, but definitely from an outside land. They don't have any value in Lordron, but they're found stashed away here in An Orlando as if they were precious, <laughs> precious loot hidden inside these mimics, so coin made of gold with all father lloyd and his white halo shown on its face white halo of all father lloyd and we've already learned a bit about him through talismans and whatnot so far so he's definitely revered and esteemed and well thought of here in in orlando not just in orlando but just kind of in the world of of dark souls at least in Thurlin, I suspect that he's highly revered and may, in fact, be the the head, the leader of the church. If he's still present. Uh, the, the giant smith also told us no one here, all gone. Oh, I thought that was going to kill you. <laughs> I almost messed up. All right, now we can go down here. But you feel the black eye orb quivering. At this point, we can use... Uh, I better get out of here. <laughs> this guy comes and kills me. We can use the black eye orb to try to seek retribution for our bonfire keeper. Now, we actually are going to go ahead and do that right now. We're low on health. We don't have any Estus Flask. But actually, since we're invading this uh, this this murderer, whoever it may be. It's Lawtrek. Uh, whoever it may be, uh, we can't heal anyway. So not having Estus is not a big deal. But not being healed up all the way before we make the journey, probably going to result in our deaths. That's okay. I actually want to die here um, for reasons you'll see. Invade the world of a murderer of a firekeeper to defeat the perpetrator and reclaim the soul of the firekeeper. The black eye keeps constant watch on the city of the gods and Orlando. Invading world of the guilty as spirit of vengeance. Invaded the world of Night Law Trek the Guilty. There's the big turn. Oh, that's fascinating. The Crown of Dusk actually shows up uh, despite the mod. Hmm. That's really fascinating. 
in any case, yes, Law Trek is the perpetrator. And this is the same room that we were just in. It's easy to get a little bit disoriented there, but this is actually the exact same room we were just in. And we see he's got two white phantoms with us, with him, two friends. They all have glowing feet. That's the, the uh, fall control effect, if I remember correctly, just to keep you from cheesing them off the stairs. You're going down, but not this time. Probably we're going down this time. Well, look at you. I thought you were wiser. But I thought wrong. It is a terrible pity. Like a moth flittering towards a flame. You fellows, no? Don't you agree? <laughs> Like a moth flittering toward a flame. Notice that the sorcerer that's with him. Shit. Shit. The sorcerer that's with him appears to be wearing a sealer set. A lot of people feel like this is indeed the third sealer of... Let me try to get close to him so you can see. The third sealer of New Londo is actually right there. Now, it's it's difficult to say if it's something that he's just pillaged or if he actually is the third sealer. I tend to to agree with the idea that this may actually be the third sealer of New Londo that's chasing us, intent on sp spilling our blood, basically. But um, see that fall control bullshit? I see you. thing that just kind of really the fact that the corpse that should be uh, Yulva in what you call it Blight Town is not a female corpse is the only thing that kind of messes with that theory a little bit because you know it's it's a male there so we know she that one of the sealers was supposed to be female so if that's not her corpse, then what's going on? You see that you know, we died, we kept our souls, we kept our humanity. That's because we were actually invading. Uh, we weren't. We we that wasn't. We didn't die in our world. We died in his world. I guess the next major thing to to consider or to talk about is what Law Trek is doing. Like he said, he had business up above. And he said, enough with the firekeeper, and he killed her, and oh shit, I fucked that up! Oh man, damn it, now this is gonna waste time. Ugh. Hey. Stop wasting my time. Did I just do 421? Hmm. Hmm. Anyway. All right. Oh, that's right. I upgraded it. I was sitting there thinking it did more damage. Why is it doing more damage now suddenly? Oh, right. We upgraded it. Fuck. <laughs> All right. Black Eye Orb. Also humanity you actually can heal during an invasion like in this in and even in this special invasion here uh you can't use estus to do it but humanity still heals you so if you're struggling to defeat law trek that's one thing you can do you can also use poison poison arrows here to cheese this out if you really want to but you don't really want to do that do you no man here we go. Now let's actually try and kill this son of a bitch. If we can. He'll have a new dialogue because he's killed us once. Oh, I ran out of range. Oh, fucking asshole. Oof. Oh shit, I'm about to get backstabbed. 
like a mofo. Go ahead and take him out. Oh shit. Get out of there. <laughs> I went to all that effort to try to show that. He's just basically going to taunt us for dying to him before, though, so it's no big deal. You don't block 100% of fire damage, son. That's a wooden shield. <laughs> what the in-law trick? Oh, you're going to... See, notice he's blocking with his fucking shot all one-handed there. Whew. Souvenir of reprisal. The guilty pay the price. Returning with souvenir of reprisal. Yeah. Yeah. Firekeeper soul, ring of favor and protection, and five humanity. We didn't even actually end up needing to heal with our humanity. That's mobby. Mobby. Um, let's see. This ring is fantastic. Uh, I don't really want to put it on because then I'll be stuck with it because it breaks when removed and I don't want to lose this because it's so good. Boost HP, stamina, load. <laughs> it's supposed to be... Breaks when removed. A ring symbolizing the favor and protection of the goddess Fina, known in legend to possess fateful beauty. This ring boosts its wear HP, stamina, and max equipment load, but breaks if ever removed. It's fickle, her love is. You must be dedicated entirely to her. If you remove it, your blessing is lost. Fina. Fateful beauty. You have to wonder if Lawtrek was in search of the goddess Fina. And... He's arrived in, in Orlando only to find that the gods have long since abandoned this this place. Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> Law Trek's true motivations aren't really known, uh, but in terms of why he killed Anastasia, why he took her soul, uh, it seems likely to me that he just ugh, shit. He's just after just after souls and uh, he's gonna heal in he? nope okay there we go these guys can drop chunks I know it I know it they actually have a pretty good rate of dropping them as well <clears throat> but law trick he lets you know very early on <clears throat> he's like now who's gonna make the best use of that humanity those suckers or oh right I didn't kill this guy this time yet Oh shit. Close. The knockback on that is really annoying. But I do 421 now, baby. Oh, we gotta do it. You know, you guys know we gotta do it. I <laughs> completely missed. Oof. These, these sentinels in here are actually completely different enemies uh, than the, the ones that you face outside. <clears throat> they can do that. <laughs> they can cast Wrath of Gods if you get behind them, which makes that strategy a lot less useful. They can also heal, which I'll try to force him to do here, or bait him into doing. I'm not really forcing it, but come on, man. I'm way over here. There you go. Hop back and show them that you can heal. There. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I thought I made it through. Yeah, that's my shit. A couple two-handed R2s. Nuh-uh. Clipped your ankle. Oh. They tend to be assholes. They like to get in a corner like that and then die. Well, they don't like to die, but I like to make them die. <clears throat> All right. So that's the way to the boss of Anne Orlando. But before we go there, we have something we need to take care of because of this other item that we picked up. 
It's a Firekeeper soul that boosts the power of the Estus Flask. You're going to say, hey, you know what? We've got a bunch of those so far. It's no big deal, right? This one's different. This is not the soul of a long lost Firekeeper. This is the soul of the Ash Maiden, Firekeeper of Firelink Shrine. A Firekeeper soul is a draw for humanity, etc., etc., etc. But was the Ash Maiden locked in this dark prison by for some transgression or by her own will? Uh, we've we've talked about how it she was possibly crippled to prevent escape. Perhaps its for, former wearer was maimed to prevent escape. We've we've discussed that before, but is she there against her will? locked in that cage no but we can return her soul to her that does look like a winged creature of some sort somebody pointed that out in the comments that does look like a winged creature I don't but it does appear to have wings and it appears to be acting as a servant hmm <clears throat> Perhaps the Batwing Demons have always been servants of An Orlando. Ah well. <laughs> One way or the other. One way or the other, I need to remember that I forgot to read the description on a important item that we picked up. <clears throat> Sorry guys, that goes along with the whole being in a rear mood thing. Dragon Slayer Great Bow. Bow of the Dragon Slayers, led by Hawkeye Goff, one of Gwyn's four knights. This bow's unusual size requires that it be anchored to the ground when fired. Only uses specialized great arrows. Shot range 50. 20 strength, 20 dex. It's very powerful. Um, this is basically a strength type great bow. Hawkeye Golf, one of Gwen's four knights. And we just recently got Hawkeye Golf's ring. So between the not the not the Leo, what's the name of his ring again? I forgot already. The Hawk Ring. Between the Hawk Ring, of course, Hawkeye Golf, Hawk. Between the Hawk Ring and his great bow. He was able to snipe flying dragons out of the sky, and he was able to do it too. I know you people not believing me. He could. He really could. It's not just a legend. It's really true, and I'll prove it later in the DLC. I'm going to run back to Firelink Shrine, and you guys can join me when we get there, and we're going to have a party. Oh, one note before we go back. Uh, a critical beginner's mistake that you do not want to make if, if you're trying to do this quest that we're doing right now. If you stop in there and talk to her right now, you have the opportunity to offer this Firekeeper Soul to reinforce your Estus Flask. If you do that, you have used Anastasia's Soul forever and you will have to go to the next uh, playthrough in order to get it back to fulfill this quest. So... Just, just as a little tip for you, don't do that if you want to do the quest. I mean, if you don't care about her, then you probably didn't get this in the first place because you probably killed Lautrec already, but uh, if you don't care about her, you can use her soul to reinforce her Estus Flask again, but I don't really recommend it because there's plenty of long-lost Firekeeper souls to do that with. What up, bad bro? Really, the uh, the run back to Firelink Shrine is not that bad. It's it's actually very quick. Uh, this whole game, the connections are really, really, really smooth. So it doesn't actually take that long. <laughs> but I'm gonna cut it out. Well, cut out most of this anyway. Not all of it. I've obviously already showed you a bit to it. I apologize. I'm wasting your time. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey. And his life is now over. <laughs> I'll take the 500 souls. Alright, back at Firelink Shrine. Z 
Zeke bro already back down here from his time in, in Orlando here we go return the firekeeper soul absolutely return firekeeper soul to its owner and simply giving the soul back restores the body isn't that interesting isn't that interesting there are draw for infinite humanity it makes sense that as long as she has her own unique soul that makes her uniquely what she is I don't know say human whatever a firekeeper is once she has that soul it's she's not gonna be hollow I mean she's a draw for infinite humanity but just restores her to life by returning her soul the body in the world of Dark Souls means very little, but the soul is everything. And now... Thank you. I am Anastasia of Astora. Now I can continue my duty as a keeper. But... I only hope that my impure tongue does not offend. It does offend because I've been calling you Anastasia and you just said Anastasia and that's just fucking fucking my shit up and making me look bad, man. These NPCs today, dog. What is with these guys? Anyway, uh, it's very she's she's very meek. If we put it if we put it gently. Very meek, very reserved. She only hopes that her impure tongue does not offend. Who taught you that your tongue is impure? Who taught you that you should not speak? Is it that bonfire keepers should be seen and not heard in the land of Astora? Maybe things aren't all sunshine and praise and all the time in Astora. Forgive me. I am impure. My tongue never intended for restoration. Please, if you have any heart, leave me be. I wish not to speak. And I do wonder if she has some sort of physical deformity with her tongue. We know that the Dark Moon Nidus has physical defor deformity, and we know that the humanity is writhing just be beneath a thin layer of skin for these fire keepers. I wonder if her her issue is actually with her tongue and perhaps it was cut out for that reason but now we've restored it <laughs> so it's back I mean I don't know it just these these are these are the sorts of things that are going through my head anyway we need a firekeeper soul oh no she does not wish to speak hmm <clears throat> Note our bonfire is restored. If I rest here, we can't homeward bone back to Anorlando, but there's a little bit more business I have to conduct down here, so we're gonna go ahead and rest. And see that we're back up to 10 Estes flasks. Everything's back. Everything's cool. Everything's back to normal. At Crest at Firelink Shrine. <laughs> I was gonna say at Crest Bro, but Crest Crest Fallen is long gone. Well, fancy meeting you here. You did much for me up above. I am grateful. You know, I was thinking the gate, the old fortress. Was that your doing? Yes, it was, my, my onion brother from another mother. Yes, I knew it. It seemed like an unlikely coincidence. Well, am I fortunate? This night of Katarina thanks you sincerely. Please. Take this as a token of my gratitude. There you are. I'll be heading down below shortly. There's nothing worthwhile up above. No worries. Venturing is my life. I'm prepared for the worst. <laughs> I just want to get rid of this prompt. There we go. Um... There's nothing worthwhile up above. He did not find what he was searching for in Anorlando. Curious 
what he's searching for exactly or if he is seriously just adventuring and he adventured there and so it's done now and he's gonna go check out somewhere else oh onion bro emit force oops outland miracle foreign to the way of white emit shockwave considered an alternate branch of force emits an expanding shockwave orb the fact that it's an outland miracle uh kind of to me, it's, it just symbolizes the fact that it's from Katarina. It's not from Thoroughland. It's not from the Way of White, like Heal or Homeward. Those sorts of of um, miracles are. So, Katarina has its own... It has, as you can tell by the armor pretty easily, Katarina has its own ideas about how things ought to be done. And I tend to, I tend to agree with, with Katarina. I like them a lot. There you are. I'll be heading down below shortly. There's nothing worthwhile up above. No worries. Venturing is my life. I'm prepared for the worst. <laughs> he doesn't really sound as if he means that, though. Adventuring is my life. Don't worry. I'm prepared for the worst. But it doesn't really sound to me like he actually means that. You know what I mean, man? Oh, hello. I appreciate the adapt- Oh, you and your Logan fetish. Have you ever cast one of Logan? Yes, as he- it is Ugh. Time. Goodbye, then. You are the most dreadful boar. What's up for your pupil, man? Hello there. What have you been up to? I thought that perhaps you'd gone hollow on me. So, have you come to further your study of sorcery? Gone hollow shit, man. Look at me. <laughs> hollow shit. Far from it. All right, we got some souls, so let's go ahead and buy his good stuff. Actually, let's buy most of his stuff. I will stay here for the time being. Speak to me again to further your knowledge. All right, one more thing I want to check, and then we'll call it for today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Solaire's not here. I don't know if you guys noticed earlier, but when we were in An Orlando in Solaire's bonfire room, he actually wasn't there either. And I think we triggered him to go ahead and move on by completing his dialogue and speaking to him again. And then when I left uh, An Orlando to do my farming, I think it actually triggered him to go ahead and move. We're about to find out. Oh shit, no! Wait! God fucking damn it. And of course I didn't rest at a bonfire. Hold on. Got in too much of a hurry. We're going to put the Ring of Sacrifice on. So, what this is going to do, since we have a ton of humanity and a bunch... Well, we don't have a bunch of souls, but we have a bunch of humanity in our bloodstain. And I don't want to lose it. I'm going to equip this Ring of Sacrifice. And if we die, not only will we not lose our nothing that we have right now, but uh, our bloodstain will disappear. So we will actually <coughs> still be able to recover all that humanity, which we're going to have to give, you know, to a covenant. Which covenant? I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. I'm just playing around. Seriously, though, Hellkite being a dick, man. Eh, let's learn our lesson. No, fuck our lesson. <laughs> that was so slick. You guys, you guys don't want to go where I'm going. <laughs> where we're going, where I'm going, we don't need hollows. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up? How you doing, girl? Oh, y'all, I know y'all didn't. 
Welcome to my barbecue. <laughs> we got we got roast hollow jerky. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> kind of a shitty barbecue. I apologize. Hellkite, quit peeing a dick. Thank you. You know you like that view of Solaire standing here while Hellkite flies off in the background. Come on, guys, that was just great, right? Oh, man, I love this game. Hey, buddy. So you were in an Orlando, and now you're here. Oh, hello there. Forgive me. I was just pondering about my poor fortune. I did not find my own son, not in Anor Londo, nor in Twilight Blight Town. Where else might my son be? Lost Isaac, or the tomb of the Grave Lord? But I cannot give up. I became undead to pursue this. But when I peer at the sun up above, it occurs to me. What if I am seen as a laughing stock, as a blind fool without reason? Well, I suppose they wouldn't be far off. <laughs> oh, hello there. I will stay behind to gaze at the sun. The sun is a wondrous body, like a magnificent father. If only I could be so grossly incandescent. Guys, I am Marcus, also known as EMB. We'll talk about Solaire's dialogues in the next episode, and then we'll head into the painted world. I believe we will just continue rocking this setup, because this was actually my painted world setup. I just did it an episode too early. Oh, man. This game. Later, y'all. <laughs>